Hello everyone. So hope you are doing well. So today we are going to start the circuit theory one basic concepts where we study about the charge about the charge current voltage power and energy. So let's start. Uh, first we will start with what is a circuit. So the circuit is a path between two or more points like these are two points along which an electric current can be carried out so these are two paths as you can see here and along which the currents can pass through so when the current pass whenever there is a closed loop okay whenever there is a closed loop then the current only pass in that way okay so you have to remember one thing you have to remember is the closed loop very important thing that there is some two points these two points let's suppose it is plus and this is minus this is two points and this so this will be a circuit where the current can pass current can only pass when the loop is closed this is called uh, loop okay loop is something which is repeated so when it is closed or it is continuous so the current pass through it like this is a loop Similarly, this is a loop, this is also a loop, and here is also two source, uh, two contacts like minus and plus, so this is also become a loop, okay? If it's open like this, and there is no uh, connection here, no connection, no plus minus or current source or no element here, then it is not called closed loop and there will be no current here, okay? So this is one of the concepts. So this is capacitor. And this is diode these are the diodes resistors variable resistors and this is ICI triple five timer so uh, and this is the transistor so these are different elements which uh, I am expecting you know this in advance so what is the difference between this diode and this diode so this is thinner diode because from the shape you can see this is like this one see so this is and this is the simple diode okay and then again the capacitor so that was all uh, i want to give you an overview so this was a circuit therefore then we have light emitting diodes uh, rectifiers transformers power supply 250 this is a circuit breaker this could uh, usually we see in our houses so this is used when we have to disconnect the electric part from one point to another so we use these kind of circuit breakers okay here you can see but this is something uh, which are not which we are not focusing we will focus on some basic concepts today um, which will teach us later what kind of uh, circuit we have and where we can use it so this can be integrated circuits and there can be printed circuits okay so if you notice in your mobiles and other things you already seen this kind of pcbs so these are different kind of circuits now we move towards today's topic so these are basic concepts so basically we will see some of the system of units the si units that and then we will see what is electric charge and you know the charge when it pass through a time when the charge charge it can be positive can be negative it can be negative so when the charge is passed in within some time it is called current and the flow of current ha always have some resistance so if you know the ohm's law P is equal to IR which says that whenever the current is going there are some obstacles right the current never flow in um, easily so there are some obstacles which are called resistance so when the current and resistance multiplies it gives us the voltage so when we multiply the voltage with current it gives us power okay and the unit of power we will see in this SI unit and these all have circuit elements which can be active or passive I, I can give you a small idea that active uh, elements are those which produce electricity so what devices voltmeter ampere meter 
so power supply so these are active and passive which take energy like resistor and other passive devices we will show you later okay so these are the basic concepts through which we will go in this lecture so let's move to the next slide so the first thing first is the system of units which units we will use there are different units like if i have sorry Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have different kind of units like for the current. I just told you current is charge, charge positive or negative in a unit of time. So its unit charge unit is coulomb and the time unit is second. So we cannot write current as C coulomb per second. We have to write it as ampere because we have to use standard unit. So similarly. If uh, I give you simple thing, then time can be in hour. The unit of time can be hour or can be minute or can be second. So which one we will use? We will see what is the standard. So usually it is second. So we focus on second. So this is an example. Therefore, we have these kind of units like electric charge. Electric charge represented by Q, small q. So its unit is coulomb. Electric potential it is called voltage. Then its unit is volts represented by V. Then resistance is ohm and it is represented by this unit. How you can write it? Simple. It is like this. Okay. Or you write like this and then this one and this one. Okay. Then we have conductance which is inverse of resistance. When you stop something this is resistance. When you allow conduct, current conduct, so that one is called, uh, so its unit is, uh, it we can call two units, MHO, or we can write it like this, so it have two units, inverse of ohms, or its unit is Siemens, S, okay, then inductance, which is Henry, represented by H, capacitance is represented by Faraday, and F is its symbol. Then frequency, the symbol of unit, okay, not the, for the capacitance. Capacitance is usually represented by C. And then we have frequency, which will be usually, which is in hertz, force in Newton, energy or work. We can use both, okay. If I say energy or work, both mean same thing and the unit is joule. And then power which is in watts and then magnetic flux which is in Weber and magnetic flux density these are two things okay magnetic flux that how what is its value and how dense it is how much like mm, I can have one Weber but its density will be different okay so it is Tesla some more important things which you, you have to remember here uh, current is not written current will be and it will be ampere and it will be represented by a okay these are some important things then we have some uh, other things you have to remember will be the factors that if i tell you that it is milli farad so what does it mean? Milli, you will you have to remember 10 raised to power minus 3 is milli, okay? Then micro is 10 raised to power minus 6, nano is 10 raised to power minus 9, and pico is 10 raised to power minus 12. However, the giga is 10 raised to power 9 inverse of nano, and then we have mega, mega will be 10 raised to power 6 inverse of uh, micro. And kilo is inverse of milli and centi is 10 raised to power minus 2. Don't make mistake in this one, okay? Mostly students make mistake here. So please keep it in uh, keep it in your mind, okay? So in the electric charge, if you focus, if you rub a balloon on your head, then you can feel the electric charge and this is the electrostatic force so this charge why it is produced because whenever we rub 
the balloon it is made up of plastic so when plastic or synthetic synthetic thing so whenever we rub we get some charges okay let's suppose we have electrons i change the color wait so we have some charges like negative charges because they get charged and over here are usually positive charge because we did not rub it before so the charges will be positive and negative and you know positive and negative attract each other so therefore these are trying to attract each other okay this group so let's see how they represent it actually everything is made up of atom and atom is made up of three uh, part uh, three uh, atom have three particles one is nucleus electron and proton okay there is proton also here so the electric charge is an electric property wait i change the color green is not nice okay i move again to the maroon okay so the electric charge is an electric property of matter that exists because of more electrons so whenever there are more or extra electrons it is negative charge so electron charge is negative represented by this or insufficient electron so that is hole whenever there is there is an orbiter outermost orbiter it is nucleus so we have electron whenever electron get energy it gets free leaves behind an empty space so it is called hole or it it act like a positive charge okay it is just like a chair and electron is like a human if a human is sitting on the chair then it is um it is in equilibrium and once the human leave it leaves behind the chair so this is positive charge usually act as a um, place for electron where they come and sit then a valence electron is pulled away from an atom there is an insufficient electron or less electron therefore the atom become positive ion with a net positive charge so now when the electron le left already it become positive okay here the electron is still here it means it is still in equilibrium position okay equilibrium means equal when an atom requires an extra electron when it takes an extra electron in its outermost orbital there is excess of electrons more electron therefore the atom become negatively charged so if there is this is nucleus and there are protons so whenever the there is electron in the outermost shell then it is called negatively charged or it takes electron from somewhere it is negative charge symbol of charge so when we are talking about positive charge negative charge how to represent them Yes, when we say we understand it, but how to represent? So we represent the charge by Q. Okay, Q, not capital Q, small Q, or can be capital. It doesn't matter. So Q and SI unit is coulomb. So what is charge? Charge is presented in coulomb, and it can be positive or negative. Okay, so. Electric charge. How to measure the electric charge? One coulomb is total charge possessed by six point two five into ten raised to power eighteen electrons. What does it mean? How much electrons are there in one coulomb? One coulomb have three point two five into ten raised to power eighteen electrons. Okay. So how we can find a single electron? A single electron will be. or uh, if we want to know the number of electrons in total so we will divide it by this value okay you have to remember this value so if you want total charge q okay for let's suppose we have one
okay let's suppose we have one electron okay so if we have one electron one electron sorry for the background noise i cannot do something with the road because this place is very near to the main road okay so for one electron it will be one electron divided by this value okay 6.25 into 10 raised to power 18 so electron right here they wrote electron so electron with cut with electron and this will be some value which is equal to 1.602 into 10 raised to power minus 19 and what is the unit of charge coulomb okay similarly if i want to ask let's do another example at I tell you that okay we have five electrons find the charge on five electrons find the charge on five electrons okay so how you will solve it total charge No need to write total charge like this always you can directly write q is equal to how many electrons number of electrons divided by this is electrons per coulomb so this was also per coulomb and it become coulomb. okay 6.25 into 10 raised to power 18 electron per coulomb okay so this electron will cut with it and there will be some answer and in in cool up this c will go up okay so you can solve this question and then we will know what is the answer so let me try also 5 divided by 6.25 it is 0 0.8 0.8 into 10 raised to power minus 18 okay so this is how you will get some questions in the exam okay so the next topic is voltage or potential difference okay so what is voltage and how to represent is voltage or potential difference is energy required to move a unit of charge what was charge representation q okay the same charge represented by q or in coulombs through an element so whenever some charge are moving through an element it is called voltage and it is measured in volts okay you have to remember the unit so mathematically it is v bit potential difference between a and b okay therefore we call it v a b v a b is equal to energy how to represent energy by w you remember and q but this is changing how many units are passing in how much time so therefore we call a we put a derivative which shows the change okay so it say w is energy in joules and q or q is charge in coulomb so what will be the unit of voltage vab you cannot write joule per coulomb it should be in volts okay because we are following si units so now you know what is potential difference potential like one value is higher than other if there is no potential difference it means voltage is zero it means both points have same value okay so let's suppose this is minus 5 and plus 5 so there is the potential difference in between both sides right so this is called potential difference if it is minus 5 and minus 5 then is there some potential difference no so the voltage will be 0 and if it is 
let's suppose minus 5 and minus 3 what do you think which side is at higher value which is more close to 0 this one right this is considered more positive than this one but this is considered more negative that we call it think in this way this will consider more negative therefore this will be more negative than this one so if it is more negative the other side is positive okay so and let me take another example if it is 1 and it is 2 so the potential difference is 2 minus 1 higher minus lower will be 1 okay so you have to understand how the potential difference work okay so let's move to the other slide so now electric voltage v a b v a b okay v a b this is also v a b it should be always uh, higher to lower by the way I'll always across the circuit element or between two points in a circuit so if minus v a b is greater than zero if v a minus v a b is greater than zero means the potential a is higher than the potential b it means this side is higher than this one okay if uh, these are points it's not minus it's not minus okay these are the points like point one and point two okay if v a b is greater than zero it means v a minus v b is greater than zero it means v a is higher position if v a b like v a minus v b is less than zero then a is at lower position let me get an example like suppose v a is equal to 5 volt v b is equal to 3 volt so let me do it uh, I changed my pen color. Okay, so 5 minus 3 is always greater than 0, right? Greater than 0, right? So this is correct. So if I say V A is equal to 3 volt, V B is equal to 5 volt, then 3 minus 5 is less than 0, right? It means that simple thing that A is greater or less will make it um, uh, the potential it will show us which potential is where. So now we have 9 volts V A B is equal to 9 volt V A B is equal to 9 volt. What does it mean that A is at higher potential than B and in the other example this is example A this is example B v a b is equal to how much minus 7 what does minus 9 volt what does it mean that a is lower than b okay same here so i think this is enough for today we start in another like uh, another class we start with the current so thank you thank you for watching this I hope you like it. Please comment if there is still some issues you want me to do more examples. Just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.